Hi everybody, and welcome to this video where I'm going to give you a little overview of MBOT Rescue Simulator. MBOT Rescue Simulator is a piece of software we've designed for people who wish to enter the RoboCup Junior Rescue Challenge competition, where you have to uh, program your MBOT robot through a maze and then to rescue survivors at the end of uh, a maze. Now here you can see on our main menu screen, MBOT Simulator Rescue Simulator has two basic modes, a manual test mode and a random level generator. We're going to start by taking a look at the manual test mode. And we're just going to let it load up here. Now when we load up you can see obviously our MBOT in the center of the screen and we have a large area with a whole selection of things for you to play about with and have a look at. Over here on the right hand side we have a changer for the camera so you can see your MBOT from a variety of angles. This one we can move around and use to track. We also have one that looks at the robot from behind. We have a first person view. And back to this view again. We're going to stay with this one for the moment. Now over on the left hand side here we have a control panel which allows us to interact and get information back from our MBOT robot. As you can see here when I move the lead sliders the lead on the robot moves and we can obviously combine the colors the way you would normally be able to with your real MBOT. And the same for the left hand side. At the bottom here we can move this slider and control the gripper arm. This will allow us to pick up objects during the competition and put the victims or the survivors into their rescue area once we've made it through the maze. At the top here we can obviously use the left and right motor sliders to actually move our bot around this level. By moving back and forwards and adjusting the speed, we can obviously go back and forwards. By unchecking the checkbox, we can then control the motors independently, making it turn left and right and circle and do all of the uh, movements that we would need to navigate our MBOT around the circuit. However, we can also control our MBOT with the keyboards. So here you will see me... Oops, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that have a little bit look at the inside of the MBOT. So here you can see me controlling the MBOT with the, f with the arrow keys. You can either use the WASD in keys or the arrow keys. Here I am pushing simply the up arrow or the W key to move forwards. Then the down arrow or the A key to move backwards. And then obviously the left and right arrows or the S and D keys to turn left and right. So now using the arrow keys to drive, you can see that over on this side of the map we have a few of the obstacles that will commonly be found in the RoboCup Challenge Junior competition. Here you can see we have some debris on the circuit, there is an obstacle that would have to be avoided, and there is a speed ramp that needs to be navigated. In this level you can test out how the MBOT interacts with these different obstacles and try and start to figure out how you will program your way around them. Now as you can see we also have some of the victims or survivors that will be found at the end of your RoboCup Challenge rescue circuit. These victims will need to be picked up using a claw and placed into a rescue zone area. Here you can see how the claw will interact with a, with a, with a victim ball. So as I just move the uh, MBOT and line it up on the ball, I'll change the camera position so you can see properly. Now I'll just advance to line up properly so we're closer to the ball because it's a bit far away now. Oops, give it a little push. And once we're in position we simply change the angle of the grippler arm and apply. And now we can pick up the ball and drive around with it with the MBOT. If this were obviously the competition, I'd be taking it to put to the rescue, into the rescue area. But as it is, I'm just going to open up the hands and drop it here, as we can lease these balls anywhere we choose. One last thing here, as we drive over towards the finish, keep an eye on the colour sensors as I drive over the lines here. You'll notice that they pick up the black lines and also pick up the uh, grey of the uh, silver tape that we pass over as we go into the rescue zone. In this way you can tell that your bot has reached the end of the um, puzzle area and has arrived at the survival area. 
Now we'll go back to the main menu and take a look at the random level generator. Now we're going to take a look at Mbot Rescue Simulator's random level generator. As you can see, when you launch this mode, what it does is it generates a level for you, which is the kind of level that you would find in the Robocop Junior Challenge Rescue Competition. These levels are generated automatically and randomly, and you can do it as many times as you like until you find the layout that you would kind of like to keep. So I'm going to say no to this one, so it's going to generate me another one. It works from a list of, um, of prefabricated tiles, so you can just keep on generating levels until you find a layout that you like. You can move the camera around and zoom in and out once the level's been made to have a look at it and, closer and expect it more closely to see if you uh, want to keep it or not. You can see where the victims are at the end. Um, and you can basically have a look around. Now, I quite like the look of this level, I think. It seems to be uh, one that would be good to, ex to show, so I'm going to say yes, keep it. Now, as soon as the M block is spawned into the level, you can see that the M block programming software launches automatically. Now, this is exactly the same software that you will be using to program your real M bot for the real competition. So, what you can do here is work on your code, develop your code, and test it out on a real simulated circuit to see how that it reacts. This is obviously far easier than building yourself a circuit at home to try and test your own M bot on. Included with the project, we've put a little example uh, code or script. So if I open that up, we can take a look at this. Oh, forgot to mention that we have the same camera choices that we had in the other level, so we can scroll through them. So I'm going to stay on this one for the moment, just to keep a look at our little bot from a distance. If we want to over here, we can also reset the level at any time, which will just put us back to the beginning at the start of the level. We can regenerate the level if we want to. Now this will obviously wipe out the level we're on and replace it with a new random level. So only do this if you've finished working on the level that you're currently on and want something new. So for the moment I'm going to say no and we're going to keep this level as it is. So there we go, no. So now let's have a, look at a quick look at the code that we've included with the game. Now at the top here you can see that we've added keyboard control. Now obviously this would not be allowed in the real competition, you have no direct control over your mbot, it all has to be done through programming. However, for the purposes obviously of testing, you might want to move your bot to a specific point in the circuit so then you can use the arrow keys to move it about. Here I've just pressed the up arrow key, the left arrow key, the right arrow key and the down arrow key will move it backwards. I can also open and close the gripper here using the 1 and 0 keys. This just gives me some rudimentary control over my mbot and allows me to move it around the circuit until I get to the area where I'd like to test my code that I've been working on. So for example, if I wanted to test my code going over the speed bumps here, I could just move it up and line it up to the beginning of these speed bumps and then once I'm there, start running my um, code. However, I'm not going to do that for a moment, so i just reset it to the start. And now we'll have a look at this uh, line follow script that we've included. Now this is a very simple script just to get you started and to give you an idea of how the programming works for the um, mbot and the kind of things that you can do within this uh, within the simulator. So here we have a line follow script where quite simply the line follower is told to go forward as long as both um, captors on the line follower register. If of course one side or the other side goes off the line because there's two captors then it will simply readjust the trajectory until it gets back on it and at the bottom here if it loses the line it will just go backwards until it finds it again it's a very simple basic script it's not one that you could enter in the competition down the bottom here we have the color sensors so we have left and right color sensors and that will control the turning so now if i click this we will start the mbot on its little program and we can see it going through the code. So now it's following the line, it's adjusting as one side of the uh, line follower goes off. When it goes backwards like that it means it's lost the line completely and goes back to pick it up again. Now one of the color sensors is going to pick up the green color block there on the right hand side. So the end block has been instructed to turn until it picks up the line again and then it resumes its program at the top here. Now obviously you can fine tune uh, your code so that it works better than this one I've done here. This is very simple just to get you started again. I would not risk I would not recommend entering the competition using this code because um, I think you'll crash and burn quite quickly as you'll see in a moment here. 
as I haven't programmed anything into this code to deal with right angled corners. So in a moment the bot is going to get to the right angle and it's not going to know what to do. However, for the moment it's still managing to follow this line quite happily with the code I've written. And if you applied this code to your real mbot, it would work in exactly the same way, following a line around a circuit. Now, as you can see, it's got past, it knows it needs to turn again, so it's turned back onto the line. It's having a little bit of trouble picking up the line afterwards, but it has done it. Now here is where it might start having problems because of the right angles. I don't, wrote nothing into this code to deal with right angles. So if you wanted to develop this code further, what you would need to do here is put in a test where if it goes forwards and backwards a number of times and is unable to pick up the line, then it needs to go out and start looking left and right to try and pick up the line left and right rather than forwards and backwards. Now in this one it did actually start finding it there, although it really shouldn't have done. So I hope I've managed to give you a little overview of how MBOT Rescue Simulator can help you develop your code for the RoboCup Junior Challenge Rescue Competition. As you can see, you can use the MBlock software to program the virtual MBlock in the, um, in the generated levels and then use that exact same code on your real MBlock. So you can test and tweak and adjust and develop your code here and see how it result and see how it affects the MBot in real time without even needing access to the MBot. Now it is worth mentioning that when you go back to the main menu you'll be given the option would you like to save this level for the next time. If you are working on a code that you'd like to develop further and you'd like to keep the same level, then simply say yes and it will guard the memory at this level in memory for the next time you play rather than generating a new random level. If you say no, then it will discard this level and generate a new random one the next time you start. So there we go. That's the end of our look at MBOT Rescue Simulator, the simulator designed for the RoboCup Junior Challenge Rescue Competition. I hope I managed to provide you a good overview. Thank you very much for watching the video through, and if you'd like more information, obviously click on the links below. Goodbye, and thanks for watching.